we will, um, it is according to Apple 201, and we'll call this special meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order on March 29th, 2022 at 2 p.m. And we're calling to order at 201. We have a single item on the agenda to receive a report from council on the status of Scattercook claims to federal acknowledgement and the pending petition for federal acknowledgement filed by the Scattercook Indian tribe and thereafter to enter executive session to discuss substance and strategy of the town's response. And with that, um, I, I'm going to, Jeff, I'm going to introduce you to our fellow board members, Rufus Duram and Glenn Sanchez. And yeah. Um, Jeff, I'm going to turn the um, microphone over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon. I don't think I've met Glenn before. I think I've met Rufus a number of times over the years. Yeah. How are you, Jeff? Um, so he may not me. I don't know how how much uh, Glenn knows about the history of the Scattercook. I'll try to. I got a lot of ground to cover, um, and I'll try to do it uh, as quickly as possible. Um, Part of the part of the reason for this meeting was and Jeff Maria to... is incoming. Just to okay. let you know, hi, hi Maria. Maria. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanted to um, uh, basically bring not only the selectmen but also the the community up to date uh, to the extent that we can do that, and then I wanted to go into executive session to discuss um, some of our strategies going forward. So, um, boy, time flies. Um, the, the town of Kent went through many years of litigation and administrative proceedings dealing with the Scattercoke Tribal Nation, the Scattercoke Indian Tribe, and their respective efforts to uh, achieve federal recognition. Um, the, um, there was uh, the proceedings before the Bureau of, In of Indian Affairs that lasted for years. There was a series of appeals uh, through the federal court system. Uh, I think there were two appeals um, on uh, the tribal uh, recognition issues with the Scattercoke Tribal Nation. And then there was um, land claims litigation, which also ended up going to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in, in uh, New York City. Um, the Scattercoke Tribal Nation was denied federal recognition in about, I can't remember the exact date, um, I think it was around 2005. And then their land claims, um, were dismissed by the trial court in around 2012. Um, after that, the, uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, undertook a review and amendments to their uh, acknowledgement regulations. And in 2015, uh, new regulations were adopted we participated in, in uh, providing public comment with regard to those regulations. And uh, not only the town of Kent, but the state of Connecticut and a lot of Connecticut interested parties. Um, but to make a long story short, the, the regulations were modified. And I think the consensus was that the regulations would make it easier for groups claiming tribal status to be acknowledged uh, by the federal government. Now, what an Indian tribe is, just for the sake of we we're clear, an Indian tribe is a group that has descended from a historical Indian tribe that has lived continuously since historical times to the present as a, as a separate and distinct community and has um, been under, uh, been a political entity, been under a leadership where the leaders would take actions for the benefit of the tribe on important issues. The, um, the Scattercoke Tribal Nation was unable to 
be recognized because it was unable to provide sufficient evidence to establish that it had existed as a political entity for most of the 19th century. There were a couple of times where there was some sporadic leadership and some sporadic action, but generally speaking, there was no evidence that the BIA found credible that there was a, a, a leadership, you know, like a political, political entity. Um, in the 20th century, the Scattercoke was unable to uh, provide uh, evidence of uh, political authority for most of the first half of the um, 20th century to about, I'm, for the sake of, of argument, to about the mid 1960s and then after 1996 because of the split between the SIT and the STN. So they were denied recognition. Uh, the SIT throughout that the period of the recognition battle was claiming that they were the true tribe, they were the real Indians, not the STN, and that the SIT should be uh, acknowledged. And there's several SITs. There's, there's the Alan Russell SIT, which is the one I'm really talking about. But there's, a, there's another entity called the Scattercoke Indian Tribe. It's under the leadership of somebody named Jeanette Storinger. And I think a guy named Michael Morningside is on her council. And, and she recently, just, just in January, contacted the first selectman, wanted to discuss her, her, the, her, her group's land claims and, um, and uh, trust fund claims. And then there's a, then there's some, there's a fellow who, who uh, claimed uh, to be part of the Kent Scattercoke named Robert Birch. Scattercoke First Nations. Uh, they seem to have gone away and are, are focusing their attention, I think, um, maybe more at Scattercoke, New York. But there are a number of Scattercoke uh, Scattercoke entities claiming tribal recognition. Um, in any event, the 2015 regulations basically made several changes um, for the sake of my discussion today, one change was that um, they allowed the existence of a state reservation to count as evidence of community and political authority. Um, that was something new that had been a big issue in the STN case. Um, initially, the, the uh, BIA said, well, there wasn't enough evidence to establish community or political authority, but since there was a reservation, we're going to we're going to think that that's uh, sufficient, and we're going to acknowledge the STN, uh, the state, the town, several other parties uh, took an appeal to the IBIA, that's the in Indian Board of uh, Indian uh, Indian Board of Indian Appeals or Interior Board of Indian Appeals, and they reversed the decision, said no, that the, the, the existence of the state reservation without more is not sufficient evidence. Well, now the, um, the regulations now have been changed to say, oh no, a state reservation is evidence of political, of community and political authority. And um, they made a change in how they assess or analyze marriage rates. And um, uh, I guess those were the big changes. Um, when I say assess marriage rates, how they, how they assess marriage rates for the purposes of just determining how strong the community is. And the regulations basically said if 50% of the members, if 50% of the marriages in the group were, were between members of the group, um, that counted as community and as political authority, as a pr presumption of it. And uh, so that would require basically 70, to, for 50% of the members to be married to each other of the marriages, it would, each, each marriage would be counted once. Now they've changed that to count each marriage twice. So each member who's married is gonna be counted in determining 50%. I don't know that that's gonna be so relevant to us in the 20th century 
because one of the other changes that they made is most of their investigations are now going to be from the 20th century. Um, so it was all well and good. Uh, there was a ban on repetitioning that had continued in the regulations. And one of the things that happened, uh, well, let me stop there. So in the summer of 2019, um, the, uh, there was a press release um, and the SIT indicated that they were, they were going to file a new petition for federal acknowledgement. That's with the Scaticoke Indian tribe, Alan Russell's group was going to file a new petition uh, for federal acknowledgement with the, it's now called the Office of uh, Federal Acknowledgement. Um, and, um, and they were going to, they were anxious to pursue land claims again. Uh, so we kind of geared up to, to get ready for that um, filing. And the fi there, was a there was a couple aborted efforts of, of, of filings that the OFA did not accept for, for some, whatever the defect was, I don't know. And just recently that was, they cured that defect it appears. And so now there is a active petition before the Office of Federal Acknowledgement involving the Scaticoke Indian tribe. That um, uh, our, our comment deadline is July 7th. So I think it was published, it was published on March 7th of this year. And we have just this little window in which to develop our response. The, the petition is on file at the, uh, um, the, the petition narrative is on file at the Office of Federal Acknowledgement. The supporting materials has not yet been published. Um, some of it will be published um, hopefully soon so we can look at it. But, um, but the membership list and some of the critical information apparently is not going to be published. I talked to the, to, um, oh gosh, uh, Lee Fleming, the director about a week ago, looking for the membership list and the organizational documents and that sort of thing. And, and the, some of that is the membership lists are not gonna be published. Um, what's sort of curious, we were, I was able to glean from the documentation that their membership is was in 2002, which is the last official membership list that I've seen. They filed that in the STN petition. That had, I think it had uh, 73 members on it. They're, they now are down to 43. And at various times since 2002, they've, they've been up to like 180. Uh, so, and I think that's because there's these other SIT entities um, that keep filing documents with different memberships. And, uh, but the STN that filed, it appeared that their membership list was only 44 individuals. Um, whereas the STN was, you know, they were up to five or 600 members at one time and they had to cut them back because a lot of them had not been tribal in tribal relations for decades. So they ended up something like 350. Um, so that got filed. Um, we, our deadline is, our responsive deadline is, is in July, early July. Um, Jean should be receiving an official notice from the BIA if she hasn't already. Um, and the notice goes to the governor and to the attorney general. A notice goes to the Connecticut federally recognized tribes. And a notice, uh, I, I saw they had Richard Velke on the notice list for the STN. Um, the, um, the process is a little different than it was last time. They do a preliminary review uh, based uh, upon an analysis of whether the group has descended from a historical tribe, uh, whether they have a governing document that describes their organization and their membership, and whether their members uh, are, have, uh, have some preliminary genealogy back to the historical tribe. Um, 
And if they pass that, then 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 it gets then all the other criteria get reviewed. For us, the um, there's some there's some there's some interesting issues. Um, but we have to, I think we have to respond to the petition as as if it's all going to be reviewed and we have to address all the issues that are that are there. So one of the other things that happened was, oh, I, let me just um, in the meanwhile, after all of the litigation involving the town of Kent got resolved with the Skatico Tribal Nation, they brought an action against the state of Connecticut claiming $600 million was taken from them in breach of a trust the duty. Um, that has been that has been working its way through the courts. Um, you know, the, the STN and the SIT always have claimed that the that the reservation was was what's called Indian country and that it was historical Indian lands, uh, native native lands. And um, the evidence seems to be that the Scaticoke were really not were really were, were historically not where they are now, but that they moved there uh, maybe in the 1730s and thereafter and that that land was really colony of Connecticut land. And, and in, the, in the 1750s, when the, when the colony surveyors went up there, they, they laid out some land for the Indians, um, probably about 2000 acres uh, to be uh, used at the pleasure of the colony. And um, that land has been sold off, especially around between 1800 and maybe 1811. Um, Portions of that was sold off uh, to benefit the tribe, and um, uh, so now they have about 400 acres, roughly, give or take. Um, but the the Scaticoke Tribal Nation claimed that when that land was sold off, the money should have come to the benefit of the Indians, and that therefore they're entitled to I don't know how they calculate it, but some 600 million dollars. They lost that case in the trial court. The case is on appeal at the appellate court, and um, the um, that was argued in January, and it's awaiting a decision. Um, so that's in play. Not we're not directly involved, although we're we're really involved indirectly. In other news, there in the regulations, the 2015 regulations. The, there was a ban on repetitioning by previously denied groups. In other words, previously denied groups are not allowed to come and resubmit a new application for federal acknowledgement under the new regulations. Um, that has actually been in the regulations, I think since, since 1978, but there's been two court cases that have struck down the ban on repetitioning. Um, the last, I would say, la you know, within the last year, there's been two federal court cases. Um, in both cases, the, the, um, the regular, you know, the court, it was an administrative appeal. The, um, the court said, oh yeah, there was not, in there was, it, it was illegal, arbitrary and abusive discretion to have this ban on repetitioning uh, because you've changed the regulations. And uh, you, you now I'm remanding it to the to the BIA to to either provide better reasoning, amend the regulation, or eliminate the regulation. So it, the two cases remanded back to the BIA, and the BIA hasn't done anything with it yet. We submitted comments, um, or the first selectman submitted comments twice. Uh, requesting that the ban on repetitioning be um, uh, be kept, and uh, you know have better reasoning for it, but that it was important to to us that it be kept because we had uh, you know 15 years of litigation with the STN. Um, so that the, the uh, there was a change of administrations and our our or our first selectman's comments, I, I've never even been acknowledged, uh, but we did submit them. And uh, so that's in play. And I wanna discuss something about that in executive session because we have some strategies on, regarding that. Um, 
So I think that is sort of the quick uh, summary of what the recent history has been. Our, our present problems are, one, we have this uh, petition for federal acknowledgement filed by the Scaticoke Indian tribe that we, we well, up to this point, we've, we've, our position has been we would address it. Um, and two, we have the courts having struck down, down the, the ban on repetitioning by previously denied groups. And if that, if that stands, that allows the Skadiko tribal nation to repetition um, if they wanted to do so. So those, uh, those are the two issues. Uh, I actually thought that, um, I, 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 you know, it's hard to get any information. Um, you know, a lot of times you're you're reading tea leaves and trying to figure out what's going on. You know, what what happened to this? It took two years to get this petition. Uh, actually, I think not, is it nine, it's almost two and a half years to get this this SIT petition started at the BIA or the OFA. And, uh, you know, we've been, we've been trying to figure out what's been going on behind the scenes. Um, there's, uh, uh, there was actually, I think the, the current, there's a current ap appropriation for half a million dollars to the, to the Scaticoke. I'm not sure if it's the Scaticoke tribal nation or to who it's, who it actually it's for, but to the Scaticoke to, to move a burial, some mysterious burial ground, uh, uh, not the one that we can see from Skadikoke Road, but some other burial ground um, that the state is appropriating money for. So um, we can't get a, you know, we don't have a, 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 we can't really see all the directions the players are moving. But right now we know we got to uh, address the Skadikoke uh, 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 Indian tribe petition for recognition. So. That's our. That's the primary uh, task that I'd like to discuss with you in executive session. And so um, that's our cue. I will make a motion. Yeah, yeah I don't know if does anyone wants to have if there's any questions in public session. I'm happy to answer them. Sure. So Glenn Rufus, um, any questions? I know it's, there's a lot of information that Jeff has just handed out here. <laughs> I'm good for the moment. I mean, okay. Okay. Did you invite the public to ask a question? I will, Leela, as I just wanted to um, give the board members a chance before I opened it up for some brief questions from the public, because that's not on the, um, unfortunately it didn't get put on the agenda, but um, just wanted to ask Rufus if you had any questions. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Leela, you have a question. Thank I'm you. Assuming. Just a point of clarification, sir. You, when you were closing out your remarks, you said that we have to address the SIT petition for recognition. But a few, a couple of minutes before that, you said that it was a repetition to the SIN. It, so. it, the, 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 the uh, no, the S, the S, what I anticipate is we have to deal with the SIT petition right now. But because of these court cases, I'm anticipating that the STN will be very anxious to repetition for federal acknowledgement. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if you were to look at the if you were to look at their website and their history, their claims, they um they felt that they had provided sufficient evidence, but it was through political interference that they were denied. I, d I don't agree with that, but that's their claim. So if, if the, you know, depending on what the, the BIA does with the regulation, if, the, if they just sort of say, oh, well, the courts decided we're, we're, we're not gonna worry about that. Let, let, let whoever wants to, let whoever was denied in years past repetition, then I'm, I can't imagine the STN will not come forward. I, they got the, they, they, they've, they've 
they 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 have not gone away. Jeff, um, the idea of living continuously, like on the reservation, is not really something that is recognized as a that they have to prove anymore. Well, um, the the fact that the, the um, not, well, I, I'll discuss that with you in executive session. I think there's some nuances I'd like to I, that I at least have. I have some. I have some um, some uh, theories about how that should be dealt with. Okay. But, ba but basically, though, ba basically, um, the idea is if the idea is that that um, and this was this was addressed at great length in the Scattercoke Tribal Nation petition on appeal. Because initially the assistant secretary said, oh, they don't have evidence of, of community or of political authority, but they've got a reservation. Therefore, it must, it must exist, even though there's no evidence of it. The, um, evidence of political authority and evidence of community. Um, the, um, uh, so now they've put it in the regulations and the the group, I, the SIT clearly says. I mean, they're in their in their materials. They clearly say, "Oh, we don't, the fact that we have a reservation, uh, and we've had it for you know for two hundred years or whatever it was, two hundred fifty years. That we really that's that's all the evidence we need. And um, but I don't think that's that's." that that satisfies the requirement and I'll tell you why in executive session. Thanks, Jeff. So I will make, um, sorry, just writing it out, make a motion to enter into executive session, inviting Jeff Senkowitz and Maria Horn to discuss the legal strategy for response to the SIT petition. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Great. So we will pop everybody out into the waiting room. I'm going to pause the recording. See if there's anybody left. Just one to join back in. All righty. Thanks for persevering, Donna. Um, so Jeff, you'll, uh, you're gonna give us a brief on the funding piece uh, for the yeah. um, strategy. Uh, do you want to uh, just do the motion first or or do you want me to discuss the money first? Um, do, you need, do you need to resume recording the meeting? I thought I, I did, I did. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. That's okay, but thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Um, I can, uh, I'm happy to make the motion. Okay. So I will make, so we can get into full discussion. I will make a motion to authorize special counsel Jeff Sinkowitz to proceed with submitting a response to the Scattercook Indian tribe petition for federal recognition and further to coordinate with other interested parties in submitting a petition for rulemaking to the Department of Interior to address impacts of recent court decisions on the 2015 acknowledgement regulations. Second. Thank you. All righty. Okay. So now I, I guess what I what I felt I should do is address the um, the issue of the finances for this for this project. Yes. Um. um about uh, it's been well. Uh, one of the things that I have attempted to do throughout the, um, the, my work on the Scattercoke was, is to coordinate with other interested parties in uh, sharing the legal work necessary to do a response and sharing the out-of-pocket expenses for experts to evaluate the evidence that has been submitted by the petitioner. In this case, it would be the Scattercoke Indian tribe and um, and developing any new evidence that we needed to submit to support 
uh, the petition or or to support our our uh, our analysis or our evaluation of the of the evidence. So, with that in mind, up until this point, um, I have been working. You know, not not we, we we've been sharing strategy or sharing ideas, I guess you'd say, and sharing some of the work. Um, with uh, the assistant attorney general, um, an attorney for um, a Kent School, and um, and now we're maybe talking about uh, our, our 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 historical uh, consortium included Connecticut Light and Power, and I think that might be First Light now. So we're talking about getting them in, involved if they want to. Um, so with that in mind. We do have experts lined up. Um, the um, at the moment, uh, we've already uh, spent uh, forty-four thousand dollars in that regard for work to date, and it's anticipated uh, through the filing of the response by early July of another forty thousand in non-legal out-of-pocket expense. Um, and in terms of so so I've estimated for the sake of argument fifty thousand dollars the town should be looking at for for that um, for its share of that and um, and and I'm anticipating you got to think maybe a hundred thousand dollars in, in my my time and effort I'm charging at a reduced rate of one ninety it's uh, sort of the historical rate that I've charged the town um, and uh, only because I like this kind of work. Um, but that's uh, my estimate of what it was going to be. And since the big filing is going to be due in July, it's really going to be it's going to be immediate. Um, um, I would say that I had estimated 150 thousand a couple of years ago, and um, so it hasn't really changed. Uh, but but I think that's what the town has to look forward to to do a proper response. Okay. I'm just getting some information from Barbara. Um, so we'll um, need to go, the board of selectmen are gonna need to officially meet and have a conversation to be able to take a decision on an additional funding for, for possibly this year and even into 2223 um, to, to continue to um, address this. I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get some information from Barbara and she's two offices away. <laughs> uh, on 7-1, there will be $59,050 total available minus any invoices that come in between now and then. So there, so it's not an additional 2950. That 2950 is the remaining from the 30,000 in this year. I thought that when I went over there before and asked her, she had said that it was in a separate special fund, but it is the remaining 30, what remains from the 30K that's budgeted. And then on 7-1, um, it would be another 30,000. So the board of selectmen will have to meet um, to, to talk about a supplemental request for, from the board of finance. Um, any, Glenn, Rufus, Maria, any um, questions or comments related to the motion that we have? Um, I'm happy to 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 the extent I have standing in this group to uh, to endorse the 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 motion and the work of uh, Jeff's work for many years on on the complicated issues in front of us. I'm glad that that Kent has good counsel here. Yeah, and and you have great standing in this group. We are. I am very grateful for all of the um, institutional knowledge you have and the you know the help that you provide us as a delegate. It's um, it's the town thanks you. <laughs> um, we, we know that you're you have a lot a lot going on. You have a lot of constituents, a lot of towns. So we very much appreciate the the help and um, 
and support that you provide with this. And Jeff, I, you know, <laughs> the time that you and I have spent on the phone and the amount of time that you've invested in our town and just in the last two and a half years with me helping get me up to speed and on a very complicated, complex um, uh, situation. So I very much appreciate it. I, I just let me comment one thing. So I've had a pretty long and, and uh, varied career. This, the Indian case, this, this matter involving the Indians was actually been one of the most rewarding matters I've ever had in terms of the outcome, the co cooperation I always had from the client. You know, a lot of towns, it's hard to get cooperation from all parties, but um, it, it's, been a, it's been rewarding. And I'll try to keep doing a good job. <laughs> we appreciate that. So um, let's vote on the motion. Would you like me to read it back, folks? We're good? Okay. Vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. So that is the, the, the motion. We do need to um, set a meeting. And if Rufus and Maria, if you need to go, I you are probably doing the one arm paper hanging um, <laughs> duty. <laughs> I don't want to keep you on just for us to look at our calendars, nor Jeff. Um, but it's up I, to you if you want to stay. <laughs> I, 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 I do admire ca uh, good calendar wrangling done by anyone. <laughs> I will leave you to it. Thanks. Thank you. And I look forward to, you know, more conversations on the topic and working together on this. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Maria. You. Thank you, Maria. Bye. Thank you, Jeff. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. Jeff. Thanks, yeah, Jeff. Thank you. So um, if we do an in-person meeting, it's 24 hours. If we do a Zoom meeting, it's 48. Um, I'm, you know, part of me leans towards a Zoom meeting because it's been the custom for, I don't even remember how long at this point. <laughs> um, and I know that this is a, you know, this is sort of a big conversation that we're going to be having among the three of us, and we'll probably have a lot of public interest. Um, but, um, you know, it's up to the three of us how we want to meet. Um, but I would, I would recommend sticking with Zoom. We do have to reckon with this very shortly, but for the purposes of this next meeting, I think just to simplify things. Um, with the 48 hours. So we are at Wednesday. Are we at Wednesday? No, we're at Tuesday. I will not be available Friday. Okay. So we could do um, Monday the 4th, Tuesday the 5th. Uh, Monday the 4th good. is good. Anytime the 5th, uh, I have a commitment in the morning. But um, why don't we, in, in case that Board of Finance meeting is on Wednesday, if it's okay with you all, if we could do it on Monday, that I think that would make sense just to give us a little bit more time to give Board of Finance heads up and anything, you know, give them any materials that might, they might need to have. That's Leonard, fine. students are back. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I can do afternoon on Monday. Um, how early afternoon can you go? Could you both do one? I can yeah. do any time. Let's do one o'clock. Okay. So we'll have Joyce get that um, Great. out. Monday, 1 P B O S. All righty. Great. I lost track of my phone. <laughs> Apple says it's 413. I will um, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Fantastico. All right. <laughs>